in our childhood we used to see these nice looking beautiful and knowledge providing kind of things hanging in our teachers rooms school libraries our seniors rooms about the area that they are operating maps are inseparable parts of our lives with google maps almost telling not just the driving distance but where is the location how we approach that place and what is the time in which we should approach and so on and so forth what are maps maps are drawings or depictions of a spatial relationship between a particular type of object in the surface of the earth or on the things that we are investigating or exploring if it is a political map then the spacing or the space between politically important things like state boundaries cities the location of the government offices capitals etc will be displayed on that map if it is a physical or a natural map hills mountains rivers oceans for example in case of a defense map the defense posts the supply areas the passes will be indicated depending on scale where exactly they are located the profession of map making is called the cartography and the professionals or the scientists or the technicians who are engaged in the process of making maps are called cartographers cartography and cartographers are engaged in essentially three things the first one is called survey which is measuring the distance either totally physically or by taking reference points second one is triangulation using geometry and trigonometry to find the angle between objects so that they can be put at a particular space with symmetry and with accuracy on the face of the map the third one is observation when seafarers used to go to sea they must observe various things in order to find a map of their route various techniques are used in map making the main technique is finding a center point or a reference points and finding the correlation or doing the projections so that the other objects with reference to that point are placed accurately on the map these techniques are named after either the technique itself or the person who has discovered this technique so you will find uh, there is something called uh, mercator uh, miller technique called robinson technique the orthogonal technique the hexagonal technique the mnemonic technique the earlier methods of survey triangulation and observation in the modern age how they are done the initial days the maps were made on surfaces of clay and they are drawn over it then gradually it was drawn over fabrics and then it went to paper and today everything is done on computer technology development has replaced surveys with aerial photography and image sensing triangulation or the trigonometry or the geometry part of it has completely been migrated to computers who use algorithms to deploy the actual trigonometric and geometric and other algebraic calculations calculus etc to find out what exactly is the actual projection we must also understand the history of mapping initially as i told the history was beginning with the uh, seafarers who used to travel a long distance now finding a reference point because there is a movement of earth and with climate these reference points change first attempt at mapping was finding the east west axis it was done by observing the points of sunrise and sunset at the northernmost point and the southernmost point during the solstice or when the day is the longest the sun rises and sets at the northernmost point and this is called the summer solstice during the winter solstice it exactly is the opposite 
So if we take two poles of the earth and find and draw these lines of sunset and sunrise, we can reliably find the east-west axis. Found that just finding this axis is not right because just relying on this axis, one can stray up to 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers, depending on the movement of the earth and the season and the climate. So other things like constellations in the sky and the polar star, all these were taken into account in drawing the maps. A discussion on map making will not be complete if I do not tell about the Google Maps. One of their blogs, Mapping the World 101, how do we map the world? Google has given a lot of techniques, but the essence is this. The first one that they do is satellite imagery to find out the modern spatial markers like the name of the road, the name of the square, the name of the building, the name of the business, the speed limit, the no entry zones. Based on this and the amount of data that Google has, maps are drawn. But just based on data and the imagery, if the maps are drawn, they will still not be accurate. So user feedback is continuous. You have used a Google map to reach at a wrong destination, you give a feedback. You are continuously driving and you are taking a detour, you give a feedback through which is many times automatic, which is sometimes deliberate. These are auto-corrected. The important thing that is continuously deployed is deep learning and machine learning. Based on these data, imagery, spatial mapping, user feedback, continuously prediction is being made, improvement is being made based on machine algorithms and deep learning algorithms. So that it is predicted what is the best route, what is the time to be taken, data that is used for these map making is unimaginably high. Maps, history of maps and the way that maps are used continue to evolve. Thank you very much.